All right, I don't wanna call out a bunch of other software companies. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. But have you ever used a choir or doubler plugin and you realize it doesn't really sound like a doubled vocal? It sort of sounds like a phaser with some stagnant pitch alteration that doesn't really sound realistic. Or better yet, it doesn't sound human. So I wanna do a bit of an experiment here. I'm gonna record myself a ridiculous amount of times and then compare it to our doubling plugin and see how to make the fake double sound closer to the real one in a mix. By the end of this video, we'll truly know the difference between additional performances versus just pulling up some software. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and as a vocalist, I feel like I'm always looking for ways to simplify the recording process. Things like tuning help you know if you have a solid take and you use it just right. And I think there is something to be said for audio tools that help you save time. Editing tools are another big time saver. And when we start talking about vocals, if there was a way to truly not have to double or triple your vocals, wouldn't you wanna do that? I mean, I find myself making doubles from the extra takes that didn't get accepted as the main, so I'm saving time. But if I didn't approach it that way, a double vocal would take twice the time to record and a triple would take three times as long and so long. So obviously a doubler or choir plugin would make a lot of sense for me here, but we need to record a real one to figure out what parameters to mess with on the plugin to make it sound close to the real thing. Figuring out those parameters, I'll be using Howard Benson vocals multiplier and pushing some buttons. But if there's any buttons that you guys wanna push, hopefully it's the subscribe button, like button, and notification bell to be notified when we put out new content. Transition game, still crazy. But yeah, that's what I'll be using. You guys can use any plugin that you want that has these parameters parameters to kind of follow along. But if you guys want to follow along, the session's included and you can download the trial for free in the description below. So, I mean, you can basically kind of figure out how we're getting to this result. All right, now it's time to record those takes. I'm going to attempt doing this 32 times. Let's take a listen to that in the session right after I grab some throat coat. This video is not sponsored by throat coat, but it should be. All right, now we're good to go. Don't you see? Now, the first thing that I want to do is just check it against the vocal double to see if we can basically make it interchangeable. Let's see how close we can get. There's a really unique algorithm in this plugin that helps with making sure the double isn't just a replica and is changing as the vocal changes from sample to sample. Let's see if that helps it feel more authentic. The first thing that we want to do here is check the depth knob of the vocal. This is basically a pitch drift control that will allow the synthetic vocal to drift further from the pitch of the original as you turn it up and the rate is how long it's going to take for it to get there. Two of the most useful controls because when we think about a vocal double, the whole point is we know the pitch isn't going to be exactly the same and that variation of it is what creates the chorusing effect that we hear. So let's mess with those for a second. Okay, sick. Now we have to deal with the timing. What this feature does is allow for the synthetic voices to be moved ever so slightly to make it feel more realistic. You're gonna see how different this can be as we do more voices. Check it out on this single vocal though. Okay, 
So those parameters seem to be the key factor in making the doubler seem more realistic, but let's try this with four voices now. I wanna approach this a little differently this time by putting the plugin on the doubled vocal, since it's already unique from the main one that will give us even more variation. And since we already know it can handle creating a generic double, if singing a double can now make it a choir, it still gives you a ton of functionality. Let's see which additional parameters are needed. The first thing I'm thinking about is, I know the real vocal is gonna have more width, so we need to focus on that control. Whenever you have three vocals or more, you know, you pan the sides out. So let's try to get the same amount of stereo width out of the plugin that we're getting when we hard pan the real vocal. And make sure to be careful with the stereo width because if you take it too far, it can make it feel far less authentic. Let's give it a go. So once again, uh, it shows that it can hang. If you really think about it, all the parameters that are here are what go into creating a realistic sounding double. The question is then up to you to decide if you think it sounds as good or better. If you want my personal opinion, time is money. So as long as I'm getting a good result and saving time, it's doing its job the way that it's meant to. You know, kind of like that blue stripe that I used to have sitting right there that I sold off to my friend Neil. Yeah, it sounds great, but so does a plug-in version of it. You know what I mean? Sometimes we just got to do what makes the most sense. But now I want to try it with a low octave vocal that I did to fill out the frequency spectrum of the track and we'll compare it to the low octave feature that comes in the plugin. I'm gonna just give this part away. This is awesome. One of my favorite parts of the plugin because I'm huge on using lower octaves in my tracks. I know I showed you guys how I used to do this with vocal synth a lot but this just makes it a lot simpler for me when I just need the lower vocal. But let's try to make this as bombastic as possible and max out the real voices and see what the plugin can do in comparison. Don't you see? It's a pirate's life for me. You can't have my heart because I gave it to the sea. Don't you see? It's a pirate's life for me. So in conclusion, the plugin definitely does the job needed to make a convincing double or choir. Throw it into a mix and you no longer need to think about all the time you would have spent recording these vocal takes one by one. And of course, you'll save some strain on your singer's voice by going this route. Once again, visit your local CVS or Walgreens to get throat code if needed. They really should be sponsoring this. As I said before, my friends, you can download trials now or you can try to do this in something else. But hey, I think we nailed all the essential pieces needed to create a realistic sounding vocal double. But what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below and I will chat with you fine folks like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You only have to do it one time and tap that bell for notification. So when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, my friends, I am out of here. Mic drop. <laughs> Except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing because that get really expensive. Even if it is a piece of shirt. <laughs> Later.